Hello, my name is Salvatore Corona, Solution Executive Environmental with Bentley Systems. And we're going to be uh, going into the second presentation about the interoperability between GINT and GeoWeb Publisher. In the first introduction uh, presentation, give a general overview of, of the concepts and benefits. If you have, if you have not seen that presentation, I strongly recommend you see that before getting into these other presentations. So in this presentation, we're going to have a short introduction to GINT and some ways you can view its data uh, in uh, GeoWeb Publisher. And then we're going to be discussing uh, configuring GINT and configuring GeoWeb Publisher. So what is GINT? GINT is a database manager and reporting engine for subsurface exploration. And it's used for data storage, validation, queries, reporting, and sharing data with other programs. It's used in the uh, geotechnical, geoenvironmental arenas, and uh, it's also used uh, with, with mining uh, uh, applications as well. It is the most used product in the category in the world. It's used by uh, many of the largest and smallest companies cover the full range. The program can be used to whatever level uh, you wish. And it's used by many, many um, uh, government agencies as well. So you collect data into GINT using many different techniques. You can certainly uh, type the data in manually. We have a very good editing uh, interface. You can bring in other formats, uh, Excel, etc., uh, electronic field data, data from PDAs and um, uh, tablets, lab data, any kind of data you wish related to your project. Once that data is in the database, you can then share it out and publish it in many, many different ways. Um, modeling, um, web-based GIS, as we're going to discuss, Google Earth, uh, and lots of different report production. Some of the kinds of uh, data reports, of course, we have borehole logs, well logs, and all the reports are user uh, customizable. You can make whatever you like. The program comes with quite a few sets of localized files for different parts of the world. Uh, you're free to use those. You can, we have many other uh, reports on our website that can be freely downloaded. You can create your own forms. You can hire us to create your, them. Um, there's quite a wide range of capabilities and, and options. And then we have uh, what we call fence diagrams. Lab reports, tables, graphs, etc. Um, anything you'd like. What is GeoWeb Publisher? It is a web-based GIS, very easy to implement, and very high performance. And it brings together multiple graphic and database sources. It's very important. No data actually lives within GeoWeb Publisher. It is all linked in. So you deal with that data in its you know, best uh, medium uh, for generation and manipulation. You could have dozens of programs uh, taking care of many different kinds of graphical and database uh, uh, sources of information, and they can all be pulled in to GeoWeb Publisher. As that data changes, the model then changes. There's no import-export kind of thing. It's all dynamically linked. And it supports collaborative workflows, and it follows um, ISO standards for mapping and GIS. So you can use many objects from other GIS programs, like shapefiles, etc., cetera, uh, within uh, GeoWeb Publisher. And it's got advanced tools for uh, web application creation and administration, and many end-user tools uh, for navigation, querying, etc. So let's get into the uh, program. So as a brief overview of the capabilities of uh, GeoWeb Publisher, um, uh, 
is broken up into a number of frames. The logo frame at the top of the screen can be configured with your own graphics and have its own internet link. So this one, when we click on it, goes to the uh, GeoWeb Publisher page on the Bentley site. The map frame uh, displays the layers that are marked as visible in the display frame here. And each layer can also have scale dependencies to optimize map navigation. In the full extent view that we have here, three subsurface investigation projects are shown. These three here, we hover over them. Uh, we have some information about them, we call this the tooltip, and that is user definable. You can just decide what gets displayed uh, in the tooltip. Now, using the mouse wheel to zoom in at a certain point, which again is user definable, the project icons disappear and the borehole icons and the section lines uh, appear. The display frame here lists the uh, layers that uh, were built into the model and these layers are all user definable. And you can have as many or as few as you wish. Uh, and each layer can have its own graphic file or database source. And layers can be turned on and off, and some, like the project and borehole layers, can be visible only in certain map scale ranges. The searches frame uh, holds as many user-defined searches as desired. We have four designed here for the subsurface data, and we'll be going over that both in a moment. And um, The information frame here shows the results of uh, information um, selection, either through searches or through the information button here. We can click on a borehole, for example, and the information appears. And again, all this information is user definable. In this case, we've defined uh, the borehole information, rock information. This particular borehole has no rock and water level information. And let's uh, select a few boreholes here. I'm going to use the selection tool and I'm going to use a uh, select by circle. Like that and we'll pick those and then we click the information button and they all appear here. Now I'm going to move this up. Um, I am recording this at a low resolution so that it appears uh, on everyone's uh, monitor properly. Uh, and you would see more of the information frame uh, at a, a normal resolution. And here I'm going to show all the results. Drag this down a bit more so we can see more of this. Now this information uh, can be sent to a CSV, an ASCII file, uh, or Excel. We'll do that now. And the tabs here are exactly the same tabs we saw in the um, in, in the information section. You can also send it to an XML file, which brings it up in your web browser. And besides the information we saw in the Excel file, we're also seeing the view we have in the map frame along with the boreholes that are highlighted. And then all the information we saw earlier. The overview frame uh, shows a background map of the area with the current view window. So as I uh, pan, this window will move, 
and as I expand or contract the view, or zoom in, that will also change. Right. The thematic frame, you can set themes for any object you wish in the model. And we set up themes for boreholes, two of them. And right now they're disabled. I can't click on them because the boreholes are not visible. So I'm going to zoom in and see them again. And I'm going to unmark them. There we go. And I'm going to select a theme. So we'll go with a whole depth theme. Now, all the icons, the borehole icons, are replaced with uh, different icons indicating depth of hole. So, less than 10 meters, 10 to 20, and greater than 20. This is all user definable. You can create whatever ranges you wish, whatever icons you wish. And the icons also apply, uh, custom icons also apply to the boreholes. Notice we've colored them differently, and these are different borehole types. I hover over this one. Again, this tooltip is up to, to you as to what actually gets shown. This is an RC, a rotary core hole. This is a, um, a SCP, a static cone penetration hole. And these are uh, cable percussion holes. We have another theme, which is the overburden versus rock in a hole. And here, we're using pie charts instead of there we go, instead of icons. So this hole has this much overburden and this much rock. And these holes have no rock. It's all overburden. You can create as many themes as you wish. Put it back. The markup frame is where you can do some collaboration. <clears throat> right. So I'm a um, geotechnical project manager, and I've looked at all the data. And one of the things I'm going to look at here, I'm going to call for information. There is a, a link here to a PDF of the log. Click on it. We have our log form, and do that with any of these. And I also want to look at the sections. These are section lines, so I'll take a look at uh, this section here. Oops, sorry. And it has a description, and it also has a PDF link to it. All of these were gen all these reports were generated by Git. And you could have many other links. You could have links to graph reports or sitemap reports or whatever reports are available in Git. There, there are nine report styles, and within each style, you can have as many forms as you wish. So you could actually link multiple log forms for each log if you want to show different kinds of data uh, for the different boreholes. So I've looked at all of these. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to need another borehole uh, here. So I'm going to mark it up. Play with the line thickness and text height. And I'm going to put a little circle there. And a little call out. New uh, sample borehole to 20 meters, and whatever other notes you'd like. Click OK, and then I can place this and zoom out a bit. There we go. And um, I'd like another one here. Well, let's let's pick that one here. All right, so. That again, and another call out here. 
you a cone and a metrometer or to 15 meters. All right. Now, as I said earlier, no data actually gets stored within GeoWeb Publisher. And these markups will not be stored with the model. It would be quite uh, cluttered if lots of people were putting things there and it stayed. Uh, what you need to do is store the markup. You save it. And we'll call it um, Git Markup. And now I can clear this. And now you can email that file to someone, and they can open it in this model. They can also open it in many of uh, Bentley tools that accept markups, Navigator, MicroStation, and others. I'm going to reopen it here. I'm going to load it. Here and there they are. We can zoom in to see what they're talking about. And we can also unload it. This is a very powerful collaborative tool. And the various frames can be moved to other locations, as we saw earlier, moving the info frame and um, and uh, this is particularly useful if you have dual monitors. You can, you can maximize your map view while putting your other frames in another monitor. And if you want, you can maximize it right now and just hide all the other frames. The toolbar, which is also user configurable, you decide which tools will be in the model. Um, and we have uh, you know, the, the usual panning and uh, zooming kind of uh, tools. And the selection tool allows you to select individual map elements. That's just the, the standard one here. So I can click, click, click. Uh, or I can select by circle, polygon, needle selection. The inf update information button we've seen, and, um, click on whatever we want, and it will show up down here. And then we can unselect. There's also a measure, measuring uh, <coughs> tool. It will show you the total distance and the segment distance as you're moving along. And then we have an area tool. And it changes as you move. You can copy the um, map area to the clipboard and then paste it into any program that can accept a, a raster image. And of course we have normal print operations, but we also have an advanced printing uh, tool. What this allows you to do is a number of things. You decide what you want to, what area you want to print. And the uh, cutout at the lower right reflects the cutout of the form, which this frame you can create however you want, whatever size you want, etc. It's all here. So I can place it wherever I like, but you could also rotate this. You can have a fixed rotation or an interactive rotation. So I click and then I can move this anywhere I want. And there it is. And I can put in a comment, uh, as many comments as I'd like. Uh, my comment. And then I can print. Now printing here, uh, it always goes to a PDF. We'll call it Git. And there we have your comment and various information that is programmed uh, into the form when you create it.
And finally, we have the layer book. And this gives you a summary of all the layers that you have defined. In the main, in the display uh, panel. Here shows a legend of the different uh, borehole types for you. And it also tells you the scale range of which boreholes will be visible. Be visible um, uh, below uh, 1 to 10,000. And projects um, are visible above 1 to 10,000 scale. And you can make any objects that you wish selectable within the map. In this particular map, we've only made the three uh, subsurface information layers selectable. None of the others are selectable. They're only visible or not. And the database objects that we have, which uh, you can see some of those here. I'll just pick one of these. This information uh, can be made read-only or read-write. We've made all of this read-only, which I think is a very important uh, part of this. You want people, you want to be able to share data, uh, but only certain people can uh, edit it. Let's go a little more detail on um, some of the subsurface data information, and uh, let's look at the searches. So. Uh, at the highest level, we have a project list. And you can uh, type a project identifier, or if you know the first few characters, I know there's one with an A and a star. I'll just say it starts with A. And it's this one, and it zooms into that area. And the project information also has a PDF associated with it that we've uh, attached to it. And this has the entire geotechnical report. You can also, in this case, type nothing, and you'll get all the projects. And it will zoom to that, and all the information is down here on all three projects. It's also a borehole list. This is at, at the crudest level. You can it shows all of the boreholes in the entire model. Uh, not very useful if you've got 10,000 projects. Very difficult to use this, but let's just pick one. Once I picked one, it zooms to that borehole, highlights it, and shows its information here. Now we've gotten a little better. We now have a search here, um, pick a borehole within a project. So this is a two-level uh, search. First you select a project. And then you select the borehole. And finally, we've created a search of boreholes by type. Here are the three different types. And I'm going to pick the static cone penetrometer holes. And they're all highlighted here. And we zoom to it. And they're all shown here. You can make multi-level searches, as, as many levels as you wish. Uh, you can decide whether wildcards will be used or not, whether they need to pick anything or not. Uh, all those options are up to you uh, in defining these different searches. So in summary, GINT has a wide range of powerful and flexible capabilities. It has user-definable database structure, reports, symbols, etc. 
and it's, uh, it has interoperability with most leading tools in this field. Data are input once and can be reused many times in different formats. And we can link any parts of your GINT database into GeoWeb Publisher, and we can link any GINT generated reports in the GeoWeb Publisher. GeoWeb Publisher is very easy to use, um, and you can publish whatever views of the data, whatever kind of data you wish, and you can link whatever information you want, and you can link data from multiple sources. Thank you very much. I invite you to move to the third presentation.